Poaching has reduced in Kenya, but elephants are now facing a new threat, human-elephant conflict. As Kenya's human population rapidly grows, elephants are being squeezed into smaller spaces and clashing with humans over resources. Save the elephants and partners are working strategically to find solutions to enable humans and elephants to live in harmony. One of those projects is in Maralal, where Bernard Lesserin, a wildlife guide from Samburu, is working with Save the Elephants to learn more about the issues farmers are facing in the north. I am Bernard Lesserin. I'm a resident of Maralal. Having been born just north of Maralal in a place called Baragoy, a few kilometers to the north, looking at elephants and how intelligent these animals are, it gave me a passion, I would say, to try and, and do something for wildlife, I try to champion for uh, wildlife uh, within the Samburu community. Currently, I'm working to try and do a baseline study of human elephant impacts on the people and especially farmers around the Maralal area. This is one of the areas where there is a lot of uh, human elephant conflict because the elephants come down from the forest and they uh, go to the uh, farmers. So this is a clear uh, elephant damage site. What the farmers do in the morning when they wake up is to cut bushes and try and close uh, uh, the elephant entry. As you can see, just a few meters from, from the fence, you can see that there are maize crops there, and it looks like it's maturing plant. So we are encountering a lot of these uh, uh, issues of elephants getting into people's uh, farms. And this is what is making the farmers extremely mad, and a lot of them uh, really don't uh, like elephants. We're in a place called Shaba, and uh, Mzela Parsaia, who lives here and he's actually living on the edge of the forest, tells us of uh, frequent visits by elephants to his farm. As you can see, this is an elephant uh, uh, footprint. This is elephant dung. You can, you can tell pretty much what the elephant has been feeding on by looking at what comes out. For example, this, is the, this shows you that this is um, maize. So Mzele Kerisai is uh, one of the farmers in this study area. He lives on the edge of the Kirisia forest. One of the things that he's found out is that um, elephants are incredibly quiet when they get close to the farm. What he does is that he lights fires around his uh, homestead to keep elephants away. He keeps dogs uh, here, so when, when dogs see the elephants, they bark, and, he, uh, and, and that's a warning sign. They also use other methods like um, pot beating, any teen uh, beating to, to make a lot of noise, uh, or wood wood, uh, wood beating. And these are uh, some of the methods that are used to, to chase elephants uh, away. We are uh, at a place called Lakira, which is one of our group uh, study areas. We're just about to embark on a focus group discussion. And this is uh, basically to gather information on uh, elephants activities around this area. The focus group discussion involves 10 farmers who've been badly affected by elephants and it acts as the representative sample for the whole group. During these focus group discussions, the farmers get a chance to map out and understand the common routes used by elephants during crop raids. This knowledge will go a long way to helping them effectively use the mitigation measures outlined in Save the Elephant's Human-Elephant Coexistence Toolbox. Save the Elephant plans to use Barnard's research to help develop strategies towards a harmonious future between humans and elephants in Northern Kenya.